In this video, we're going to be modeling a composite airfoil and sparse system. Let's make a start by dragging over an ACP pre-cell to the workbench. Right click on Geometry, Insert, and Browse. We're looking for the comp airfoil CAD.STP and open it in SpaceClaim. On screen, we have four components. We have the airfoil, we have the spar, and we have the two ribs. We're going to be modeling this geometry using shells, so we need to take the surfaces for each object. Starting with the airfoil, select the top surface and select Ctrl C, Ctrl V. This will copy the upper surface to the tree. Now if we hide the other components, we can see that we have just the airfoil surface. We want to split the airfoil into an upper and lower section. So if we create a plane along the ZX axes, we can use the plane to split the front of the airfoil. And because we've created three extra faces, we need to use the repair tool to combine the faces that we don't want split. So if we hit merge faces and select the three upper faces, we can see that we've split the airfoil into two sections. And now we can hide the airfoil surface. We want to display the ribs and the spars. And now we want to take a mid surface of the ribs and spars. So if we select all, go to prepare, and hit mid surface, we want to use a selected range. So if we use the range of 2mm to 10mm, and select all the objects, we can see that it will create a mid surface. Because we have a gap between the rib and the spar, we can use the pull tool to bring the edge of the rib to the spar surface. We want to select up to, such that the edge gets pulled to the surface. And repeat for all other edges. And now we want to use a shear topology tool to create a join between the spar and the rib. So if we go to workbench and select share, we have four edges that we can share. So we select yes. If we now show the airfoil surface, this is the geometry that we're going to be using. In this example, let's create the composite first. So we need to suppress everything that's not going to be a composite. So if we control select the mid surfaces and hit suppress for physics, we can see all that we're going to be sending is the airfoil. We want to import the composite material data into the engineering data cell. So if we go to engineering data, data sources, scroll down to composite materials, let's use carbon fiber woven 230 GPA wet. So now we can begin meshing the airfoil. To start, we need to assign a thickness to the geometry. This thickness is arbitrary and will be changed when we do ACP. So let's just arbitrarily say this, the thickness is one millimeter. Let's now set the mesh default size. Let's set it to 20 millimeters. And let's insert a face mesh. This is the mesh we're gonna to send to ACP. And now we wanna update the model cell. And now we can open up ACP. Now that we're in ACP, we need to start making a material. So if you go to Material Data, right click on Fabrics, Create Fabric, we can use the material that we've imported, which is epoxy carbon woven. Let's say that the thickness is 0.4 millimeters, and let's hit OK. Now let's create a stack up. So the stack up will consist of four layers of the woven carbon and it will be in 
zero forty five degree orientations. And hit OK. Now we need to create rosettes to specify the local fiber direction. But first, let's plot the mesh. Right click on rosettes and go create new rosette. Let's do the top surface first. Set the origin to be any point on the top surface. Let's set the first direction to be pointing towards the leading edge. Click on the first cell, hold control and click in the direction that you want to go. So here we can see that the X direction is pointing streamwise towards the leading edge. Let's set the Y direction to point upwards. It doesn't matter which direction Y points as long as it's consistent across both surfaces. Now let's do the bottom rosette. So we repeat the process, right click, create rosette. We now want to select the bottom surface. Select anywhere on the bottom surface. And now our direction wants to point towards the trailing edge because we want to have a continuous line of X vectors along the airfoil so it needs to loop back around. So if we go first direction, select the element, and select the direction, we can see the X direction is pointing towards the, towards the trailing edge. So now direction 2, we need to have Y pointing t downwards to be consistent. And we can see in both rosettes, Z is pointing inwards. And now we need to create an object-oriented set. So if we right-click, create we can select all elements, so if we select element sets, all elements, and we want to seed from the top surface uh, at any point. We want our direction to be upwards because we're using the surface as a male mold, and we want to select both rosettes. And hit OK. Now we want to create the plies. So if we go to modeling group, create modeling group, if we right click and go create new ply, we want to select the object oriented set, we want to select the stack up as our material, and we want to leave the rest as default. And now if we click the lightning bolt to update, we can see that our airfoil has now been made into a composite. So on the side we can see that the thickness is 1.6 millimeters, and if we plot the fiber directions, we can see that it starts down the bottom and loops back around to the top and our Y direction is consistent throughout. Now that ACP is done we want to drag over a static structural cell and we want to combine the output of ACP to the, set to the model cell and we want to transfer the shell composite data. And We want to go right click and update the ACP cell. And now we want to start the workflow for the non-composite material. Because the geometry is locked into an ACP cell, we need to first open up that geometry and then save it to a local folder. So now that we've saved the geometry to a local folder, we want to drag over a mechanical model cell. In the engineering data we want to add aluminium as a material. So general materials, aluminium alloy. And on geometry we want to right click, import, CAD system is what I've saved the geometry as. And now we want to open up the geometry cell. And now we want to suppress everything that isn't the shell model of the ribs and the spar. And now we want to open up the model cell. Let's set the mesh size to be 10 millimeters. 
and let's generate the mesh. If we go up to geometry and expand the system, we want to change the materials to aluminium alloy. And now we want to connect both model cells. We want to update And now we want to open up this model cell. This is essentially combining the ACP output and the output of our non-composite material. Now that we've opened up the model cell, the first thing we want to do is create connections between the airfoil and the ribs. To do this, right-click Connections, Insert, Manual Connection Region. We want to set the contact region to be the tops of the ribs, and we want to select the target to be the airfoil surface. So let's start with the target. Face select the top and the bottom of the airfoil. And now we want to hide the airfoil, so select the face and hit F9 and to contact and for the contact we want to select the edge selecting tool and click the rib surface. We've now created the contact. We want to keep the type as bonded and let's change the formulation to MPC. MPC essentially binds the nodes together. Let's set the pinball region to be half the thickness of the ribs. That was set to 10 millimeters, so let's set the radius to 5 millimeters. To show the airfoil again, hit Shift F9, and this will show all hidden surfaces. We now want to bond the two surfaces of the trailing edge because there is a gap between the two surfaces. So if we go to connections, insert manual connection region, we want to change the contact to include edge to edge. And here we want to use the edge selector tool to select the top and the bottom surface. And now we want to add our boundary conditions. So if we right click on static structural, insert, fixed support. We want to scope the fixed supports to the end of the spar. And we want to add another fixed support to the other end of the spar. We now want to add pressure distributions on the top and bottom of the airfoil. So if we right click static structural, insert pressure, we can set a upper pressure. We can set a pressure normal to the surface of 0.001 MPa. And we can repeat the process for the bottom surface. Let's apply a pressure of 0.005. And we can now solve the system. So if we go to solution information, geometry, we can see where the MPC contact region has taken place. The red lines indicate nodes which are joined together, whereas the contact region we did on the aft of the airfoil doesn't have an MPC contact, so there are no lines showing us where the nodes are connected. Now let's insert a deformation contour. We set the deformation scale to 1, we can see where the airfoil is deforming. We can also add a von Mises stress contour. We need to set the layer to be the top and the bottom. So here we can view the max stress. So if we go into result maximum, it displays where the maximum stress is. If we want to know if our composite has failed or not, we can use the Composites Failure tool. So here we want to enable Maximum Strain, Maximum Stress, and the Psi Wu Failure criteria. So now if we go right click Evaluate All Results, and we draw the Failure criteria, and we can see that we only reach a failure condition of 0 
where if the value reaches 1, the composite is said to have failed. So a value of 0 0.16 is safe. Let's say we want to determine what the reaction forces are at the fixed supports. So to start, we can go fixed support 1 and fixed support 2, and we can drag it into the solution. This will create the force reactions for each fixed support. But let's say we also want to know the moment at the fixed support. To do this, we need to go solution, insert, probe, and we need to set moment reaction. So at the boundary condition, we may need to specify fixed support or fixed support 2. Let's do both. So here we can see the moment at each fixed support. 